Hello, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me on another of my wonderful interviews. Today we're going to delve into the subconscious mind, possibly. Uh, we're going to find out who is making up your mind. Are you in control or other people in control of how you think? Uh, I'm going to be talking to Sherry Jemmett, who is a theta healer, uh, accessing the subconscious mind. She's also a personal and spiritual development person, been working in this sort of area for something like 30 years, she tells me. Sherry, welcome to the show. Hi, Richard. Lovely to be here. And thank Lovely. you for inviting me. It's my pleasure. We spoke briefly at the Glastonbury Symposium, as I we recall. We did, yeah. That was such a fantastic evening. Thank you so much for coming and just sharing your light. Um, that That's uh, my pleasure. It was great fun for me, too, and made some wonderful contacts, friends, whatever you want to call it, people mm. on the... Uh, on the on the freedom the sovereignty the truth the spiritual side of things um and hopefully have some more of the the people that were there appearing on the show in due course when they can make it so so today um as i say there we're going to sort of delve into the subconscious mind it's an area that's fascinated me since i've been 18 um, the subconscious and i read a number of books back in the 1970s books from the 50s um, things like um, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Um, um, I think Dale Carnegie had one which wasn't specifically about the mind, but it was sort of practical psychology of how to make friends and influence people, which a lot of people then dubbed as how to lose friends and or how to make enemies and annoy people or something like that. Um, and I read a number of these sort of things. Then sort of, you know, as you do, I was young, impressionable and um, grew up. But... Of course, we live in a world that's swamped with adverts, with people telling us things, and it's all influencing us. And as we have seen in the last three years, we went through a very uh, dramatic time where a lot of messages were given to us and people seem to almost obey like robots, a bit like the scene in um, H.G. Wells's The Time Machine in which the Eli... Um, if that's I've got the pronunci pronunciation right, as soon as they hear the siren, they go off to the Morlocks chambers and um, no nothing can stop them. They just go off to be consumed, I think it is. So you've been um, it itching to talk to me about this and you've been dealing with how things influence your mind. Maybe you can explain what's going on. So there's so much to say uh, on this topic, Richard. So um, I'll do my best to <laughs> keep <laughs> it as, light and as interesting as possible. But yeah, yeah. Um, mind control definitely has been, um, you know, in the background for many years. But our mind is really um, divided into a sort of conscious part and a less conscious part. So the subconscious part is that just floats just under our kind of everyday awareness. And that's where we actually store a lot of our programs. Right. So where, you know, I'm gonna talk about where the programs come from, how they get recorded and et cetera. But yeah, it's not a, it's not a new topic, but it's a topic that's kind of worked its way more into mainstream since I think the 80s, I think, you know, Louise Hay was one of the first people to really kind of break through in the kind of self-help section of bookstores with her books about heal your body, heal your thoughts will heal your body. So this body-mind connection suddenly became more mainstream. It's not just some kind of spiritual thing going on in in the background of people it really is something that is part of our daily life and a very important part to actually understand how how this or this all works mm. so louise hay would say things like um and bless her she's crossed over to the light now but you know just a, a wonderful wonderful woman and taught people about repeating things and repeating affirmations would somehow create that belief in your brain. So our brain is like, um, 
it has this neuroplasticity, which means it's like a network of neurons. And when you think something four or five times, or when you say something, as Joe Dispenza said, stuff like this, um, it, it creates a pattern, it creates a, a new relationship with your brain, it becomes a long term relationship with your brain. And then what happens is you believe it's true. Hmm. And it filters down into this subconscious part of your of of you. So it becomes a part of you and then it then affects your body's chemistry. So if you're going to believe, you're going to say, these these are just one example, by the way, it's not the work that I do. The work I do is much more direct and instant. Um, but by repeating those things, you're going to come up against other pathways, other neurons that are sort of um, counterproductive to what you want to believe. So somebody says, I'm rich, I'm wealthy, I'm abundant, I have love in my life, I have happiness and joy in my life. And you repeat that stuff, why sometimes those affirmations didn't work, because it didn't actually deal with the blockages, you know, that were mm. actually blocking those things come in, because we're naturally wired up to have fun on planet Earth. Well, I think we all would love to have fun, don't we? But there's so many pressures. But, to, but going back to that point, it's in, it's interesting you said it because I, when I was young, as I say, I read a number of these books, and it, you know, and it says it says you know if you think in a certain way, you can manifest stuff, uh, your life will improve, and all of that. And I was doing this to the best of my ability. And then a bit like Cat Weasel, I don't know if you remember Cat Weasel, it was a, it was a British uh, t kids TV show with a failed magician. He would do things and then yeah. he had his catchphrase was, nothing works. And, and I found that this was the same. You would try all this stuff and then you go, do you know what, is this just a load of bunkum to sell books? Is it playing on people's vulnerability that they, we all want to be wealthy, we all want to have good things happen to us? And then all this material comes out and says, you know, it's, it's this easy. Believe this and it'll all happen. And then you buy it and you go, well, that didn't work. I'll buy another book. Maybe I missed the secret somewhere. So I think a lot of people yeah. are sceptical because they may have tried it and then thought, but it's not working. Yeah. Well, here's the key. Um, if you're going to go into that stuff, into really examining yourself, uh, because we're on a we're on a spiritual path, we're on a, a personal journey, but it's a spiritual path, and along with that, we need to kind of delve into who we truly are, and really reconnect with our true power. That our thoughts and our words create the reality. And like you say, having read those books, there's a lot of um, literature in the corporate world around things like that. Um, there's books like The Secret, um, different films. Um, Greg Braden um, does some wonderful stuff. And he, um, there's, I think it's on YouTube somewhere, where he shows a non-medical kind of hospital. I think it's in China. And the doctors are around this uh, this woman on a operate uh, in a surgery or something. But all they are doing, they're not actually cutting her tumor out. They are monitoring the tumor on a screen, which is filmed. And there's three or four of them chanting and wholeheartedly believing that this woman's tumor is healed. So they're harnessing that power, that belief system. This woman is healed. I believe in every cell of my body. This woman is healed. And they start chanting, wa -sa, wa -sa, which translates as, I believe, it is done. It is done. So they're chanting, it is done, to reinforce the brain's um, energy field that this reality is now done it is now in place 
and you literally can watch the on the screen the size of this tumor slowly shrinking wow so it is well, working <clears throat> So it's it's working in front of your very eyes. Now, Greg Braden, you know, shows us that, take it as you will. But it does illustrate that there are, you know, medical people, science people that are beginning to recognize that our thoughts and our brain are transmitters. So your, your brain is a bit like a computer you pull stuff up on the screen and your computer that's big like your conscious mind what you're thinking what you're actively talking about now mm. but how's that computer working is all the other programs that you've downloaded into the computer and that's that subconscious that part that goes a bit underneath the water the iceberg is mm. the bit you know the, the the ice above the water is your conscious but the huge part, yeah, icebergs are much bigger under the water. And that's you. That's your programs. That's your, so as you're going about your daily life, you think you're, you know, doing things consciously, but most of the time we're acting and behaving very unconsciously until we decide to hang on a minute why did I do that? What made me decide to follow that instruction, that order or that behavior? There's another interesting video on YouTube. It's called the, what was it called? The Brain Gain Conformity um, Video. Conformity experiment. So they set up this scene with a lot of actors and they're sitting in a waiting room like a doctor surgery or something and this little Chinese oriental girl walks in who doesn't know that this has all been set up right and she checks in takes her seat da, 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 sits there reading and after a few seconds this ding dong this bell rings and everybody who's waiting in the waiting room stands up and then sits down. And this girl sitting there, she's she's the only one not to do it. And she's thinking she looks around, kind of quizzically looking for some uh, explanation. What's that all about? No, what's that all about? There's yeah. no explanation whatsoever. A few seconds later, ding ding. Same thing. Everybody stands up. She's the only one not doing it. Third time. Ding, ding. She looks around and she stands up too. For no apparent reason, not knowing why. For no apparent reason, apart from humans are basically largely herd animals. We like the connection. So that, en that element of con conforming, mm. it touches something deep within us that we don't want to be left out. We don't want to be separate. We don't want to be alone. There's a deep human need for connection. And 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 if you take that away, if you put people in isolation, you break them. So, so, so you're, you're, I mean, you're su suggesting there that of course people can manipulate you and we know that that's obviously true. Um, adverts do that all the time. You know that's and that television is a, is a dreadful thing because it's it's also manipulating your emotions when you watch certain dramas and you know that this is acting you know they're actors because you're following them and you might be one of those people I'm glad to say I'm not but who buys the magazines to learn about the actor's private life because that seems to be you know interesting <laughs> to certain people. But then you'll watch them in something and you're then your emotions are being tugged when you know uh, that actually they're just actors. This isn't real. This is fictional. It's on a screen. You, you've even read about how the production was made and you're still being influenced. It's, it's quite incredible. Well, yes. And it's important to understand that, you know, we, we, we really do need to wake up to 
what kind of information we're feeding our brains on a daily basis because it will sift through into the unconscious and it will become our own programs. So um, I'm going to talk about what we can do about that in a while. Mm. I'd like to kind of touch base on how, you know, programs are actually formed. Um, but just on that topic, um, I think I mentioned to you earlier, there was an experiment um, in 1957, Jane, Vicky or Vissi, um, where they flashed up images of Coca-Cola and popcorn in a cinema, on the cinema screen, to find out how that would affect their sales, and their sales went up. People in the interval went out and bought more people bought Coca-Cola and popcorn. Why was that? Because something had triggered that thought in their brain. There was a lovely, I don't know if you um, ever watched Columbo. Oh, yes. Just one more thing. Columbo. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just one more question. Yeah. <laughs> he, you know, most of the murderers were narcissists. They had no conscience. They had no empathy whatsoever. Mm. They were very um, upstanding members of the community, very important and played. Anyway, one of the one of the um, episodes was <clears throat> to set up this murder. A guy fed, he was in the film, making little films, documentaries for to sell for um, advertising agencies. So he fed this guy very salty caviar before going in. They all went in to watch this film, which was some promotional thing on the screen. And he had also um, subliminally put in these uh, images of very hot deserts, parch scenes you know dripping sweating isn't it hot and <clears throat> this guy is watching because he'd been given this caviar is also extremely salty it made him thirsty the intention was to actually make him go out to drink some water which he then poison set up a recordings as if he was you know narrating the um the the voice background to the video came out and shot the guy and then got away with the murder. But he actually lured him out through playing these um, images to contact, you know, subliminal messages to make them believe you are so hot and thirsty, you need to go out and drink some water. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I remember hearing about the subliminal advertising. And, and for those people who are, and, uh, don't quite know what that means, you would have most cinema projections were about, um, well, it would depend, but 24 frames, 20, um, 30 frames or 60 frames per second, so many frames. Yeah. And one of those frames yeah. s would have a message on it. And yeah. because it was going, you'd have those 24 frames in one second. So you'd have a 24th of a second frame and you wouldn't ordinarily see it. Yeah. But the yeah. m the subconscious mind is seeing it, not the conscious mind. I think that's how that works, which yeah. is then inf and if you if you've got that enough, of course they made that illegal in the end that you couldn't subliminally advertise messages in the cinema like that. I think um, um, that I I don't know, but one of the things that helps that work if if we know there have been experiments um, going on. Another couple of them, what something else was called uh, Project MK Ultra, which was, you know, you can Google this is on Wikipedia and it describes it as an illegal um, experiment run by the CIA on patients who entered a hospital, I think it was in Canada, uh, entered the hospital with, um, severe depression and they made the family sign waivers to not come and visit them for three months and that they would you know they were signing up to an experimental treatment well um turns out that some of the uh, people there that took part had a lot of their memories wiped out oh right
and struggle to actually function as normal human beings after uh, whatever went on. Anyway, you can go and have a look on Wikipedia. Um, there are um, videos. Um, I've watched some of the people who claim to have been in, you know, taken part in those uh, experiments. And they're a mess. You know, one guy's just, you know, chain smoking, shaking, can't work and stuff like that. Um, so who knows what went on there? Um, another one was called, yeah, Operation Mockingbird. And that was another one to how to, again, go and look on Wikipedia. This isn't coming from me. Have a look. And it says that the news was used for propaganda. You know, how they were able to use the news channels to promote uh, certain views and propaganda. So that's very interesting, you know, when they talk about what... Well, I think that goes on. I mean, the, the news and stuff, the news agenda goes on all the time. And, and certainly in the UK, we saw this mm -hmm. over during Brexit, how the BBC had a very, very heavy slant in one direction and was very unbalanced, regardless of which side of the the, the uh, referendum you wanted to be. Yeah. If um, And, and of course, interestingly, though, even though there was all of this, um, the, the vote went the opposite way to how the BBC and the government actually thought it would go. Uh, I mean, it was very slim, but one wonders if you didn't have all of that um, bias pushing out at people, whether the vote would have been far more in the direction that it actually went and how many people were won over to the to the the, the BBC's and the government's line. Yeah. But we will we will never know that, of course. Yeah, and I think that's that's an important point, Richard, because um and because th that's the difference now that's really happening globally. Like I said, you know, the, the self-help books in the bookshops are, are, are normal. They weren't, they weren't there in the 80s. Um, words such as, you know, subliminal messages. Most people would have at least heard that term. Might mm. not have heard of MKUltra and those things, but they, 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 they have taken place and they are taking place. But the great thing that's happening for me and what I see and when I connect to source I get readings and I get shown information and I get shown things that our future is, is actually in our hands because the bottom line is we are creating our reality. Mm. We are creating through our thoughts because, as I said before, your brain is a, is a computer, but it's also a transmitter. You are broadcasting what you believe to be true. So if you want to be part of creating this new earth which we all are anyway whether you are conscious or not conscious or less conscious there's various degrees of being conscious of what's going on in yourself because that's a film going on outside it's like that's the big illusion hmm. from the greater perspective and from the greater perspective um Truth is kind of, well, you know, who's, who's claiming truth? There's only one universal truth. So if you have a belief, I'll give you an example of that, right? Your belief system might say, um, well, I have, you know, my, my definition of love, for example, which is a fundamental belief system to really heal and when I do sessions with people um, that's the first thing I'm shown how have you been communicated or downloaded the meaning of love so you, and you would have started taking on those downloads as a baby in your mother's womb because all mothers know that if you play music your baby's going to hear it in the womb mm. Could you just describe, can you just say what you mean by downloads? What do you so, mean by that? So downloading is that process of 
taking in information. You know, your brain, if you hear or see or feel or touch something four or five times, your brain starts to create a longer term relationship with that feeling or thought. And that's how it gets downloaded. When you shift into um, a more relaxed state, like an alpha brain wave, which is you're right. beginning to relax. If you're having a massage, going into an alpha brain wave, so it's slowing down the processing. And if you go into a deeper state, you go into a theta brain wave, which is 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 much slower. And that's the key. That's the doorway directly into the subconscious. It's like where you can access those deeper programs. So right. You, so so are, are you saying that it's the conscious mind that if you're repeating this or it's repeated to you, that it's being imprinted or downloaded onto the subconscious mind, and then that's what's influencing how you how you perceive things there on in. Exactly. So, exactly. Um, yeah. So obviously, as you grow up, um, you're influenced by all sorts of things. You're a bit of a sponge as a kid because you don't know any different so how a parent brings up their child of course is absolutely crucial and if you're constantly saying to your children oh you're rubbish you're no good at that oh you idiot oh you fool as you hear some parents talk to their kids presumably those kids grow up believing that is them that they are idiots fools stupid yeah 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 i i remembered last night um because i used to live in italy and um, I, I went through periods of teaching kids as well and doing drama and all kinds of fun things with them. And one mother came to me and said, Mio figlio è somaro. Mio figlio è somaro. Which means my son is a donkey. And that was the term used for stupid. Right. And I looked at that child and I thought, oh, my God. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I felt so sorry that his mother in front of me hmm. was referring to him in this way. So that child would have been traumatized by that. And let me let me just explain the kind of four ways, the four belief levels, if I may, how we how we take that on. So that, you know, there's a baby in your mother's womb, you're taking on stuff. Somebody mentioned to me earlier that the baby will also take on the mother's feelings, right, can be wired into the baby. And they might, they also recognize the mother's accents as well. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, it, it, it stands to reason. If, 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 it, if you've got something that knows absolutely nothing and can compare nothing with anything, then, you know, it's, going, it's, yeah. only, going, it's only going to learn what goes in. Um, exactly. As, as, yeah. And, and what irritates me is when you see, say, a two-year-old child who's had 365 days times two um, of life, and and life that is developing at a at a different pace every day, and a parent will talk to them as if they've been around for 30 years using references that the child has no notion whatsoever, has not lived enough to even, you know, grasp the English language properly, let alone the concepts that that parent is saying, you know, mm -hmm. do you want to be like so-and-so? Are you going to do this? Actually? You're, tre you're, t you're acting like this, that, and the other. And you think the child has no reference to any of this. No, no. And, and I would kind of describe that as unconscious parenting, and again, what's becoming much more mainstream is the idea of doing more conscious parenting, allowing the child to make choices. You know, when I work with clients, and they say, oh, my kid's got this and that. And I say, well, can you maybe bring in the idea, the notion that they are self-empowered? So uh, the brain gets overloaded my too many choices, too mm. much information. You know, I go into a shop and say, I want to buy a mobile phone. They say, well, it does this and it does, this one does this and this. And I say, that's that's too much information for me. I can't choose if you give me too many things to choose from because the brain functions like that. So mm. I say, I need to call, I need to text, I need to do WhatsApp, I need video, I need this. 
they go, well, okay, you're not interested. No, I'm not interested in all those other apps. It's the same for children. You know, give them two or three choices. Say, okay, let's go for an ice cream. Do you want chocolate ice cream? Do you want strawberry ice cream? Or there's vanilla. And let the, let the child choose. Mm. Right? You no, know, that, that, I mean, that makes perfect sense. I mean, abs- absolutely. And, and sweet shops can be a nightmare. You know, you come in and there's so much to choose. And you can scale oh, blimey. Whereas if you have such only a limited choice and say, do you want bonbons or sherbet lemons? Oh, I'll have bonbons. It's, it's easy. easy. For child. It's done. It's a exactly. sweetie. It's going to give me the, the buzz that I want. Yeah. And away you go. I interrupted you just now because you were going to give me four. I was going to go into yeah, the four. We did the yeah. first so I said, one. And then, and then there's, there's, there's more. So there's, there's so much I want to share with you. But so... In the womb, you're hearing the parents, you're taking stuff on. So you're also taking on the DNA. So the DNA, Bruce Lipston talks about the DNA as well as the DNA in the in the cell is not actually dictating what the cells do necessarily, but it's something called the morphogenic field, which is your environment, which is your beliefs you take on. So you're taking on DNA from your parents but you're also taking on this information in the morphogenic field around the DNA, around their cells, around the mother's cells. Um, The mother actually shares um, cells with the baby. What do they call it? Stem cells. The stem cells from the baby goes into the mother and some really interesting stuff happens there. Okay. So, that early, those early years up to the age of five, six, seven, a child isn't fully developed in their brain to have conscious awareness of what's going in. So everything is true. Mm. Everything you say, the Father Christmas is true. And um, if they say things like, you're stupid, it's true. If the child experiences, um, a, you know, any form of abuse or manipulation going on, even if they witness it going on with other people, they might take on, oh, that's what love means. Mm. And so that those early unconscious years until they get to that age where their, their brains developed and they're able to hold on to the beta brain waves uh, more fully, which is that more conscious awareness, which is your filter. You know, when you're you're using your intelligence and your critical thinking, you you can filter some of the information coming in, mm. but the child isn't able to do that. So that's one part of beliefs. There's another part, another level of belief formation that we call pre-birth. So if you believe in past lives, which um, personally I do, I think that we are born with knowledge. I think we are born with talents um, that we have brought with us from past lives. But if you were a witch and burnt at the stake, you might carry remnants of that past life until it's resolved, until you've learned the lessons which is what I do with clients to say, okay, well, there seems to be beliefs going on in your subconscious about being persecuted for being a healer or being you know, killed. Even these programs can go so deep and cause so many fears. And really it's just how can we have that in a conscious awareness if it comes from a past life? So when I do the readings, cause I can you know, read the body and see, what the programs are if you want to go out there and become a healer if you want to go out there and become a doctor or you know all all people from all walks of life come to me even in the corporate world sometimes um that's what might be blocking you so those can be released the energy when i connect to source through the theta brainwave and the technique of theta healing that we're taught by anna steibel as the founder of that um, I'm able to access that energy and 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 release it mm. from your body because everything is energy. So we ask that that belief, that program be released from all that you are, 
all your timelines and all the languages that you spoke because other lifetimes you may have recorded things in different languages too. Right, it gets very complicated, doesn't it? So that's your history. It, well, complicated at first, but this, as I said, this information is becoming a lot more mainstream, right? Your subconscious beliefs are what's blocking you from moving forward in your life. You want to do something, what's blocking you? So that's another level. That's that's the, the also the collective consciousness. You can take on these beliefs um, from your town, from your country, because like that experiment, you don't want to be left out. Mm. We're herd animals. We do grasp onto things that everybody does. Personally, I've never done that. <laughs> So, so, so in I've always your, questioned so, other people's uh, right choices. Absolutely, and yeah. quite right too. So, what you're just to re- recap briefly, because I know we, we don't have huge more. amounts yep. of time, and I know there's there's stuff to go on. Yeah. You're saying that um, you know you've got past lives, and people can believe that or not as they as they see fit. But I can yeah. you can see that from some of these uh, young five-year-olds who can play the piano you know you think where did that come from exactly. that's you know maybe the they were a pianist information exactly so you've got your past life potential beliefs that that come with you you've got what what you're hearing in the womb and being influenced as a child you've got your environment that you're going into and and that can include going to school presumably television um, your mates in the pub the, the the news that's coming out and all of those things which are building up a world in your head and how you perceive stuff so my i would would want to just ask you this one question then that that goes in if your mind is able to change um, the things that you perceive we've been in a, a situation recently in which the government at the moment are pushing in a whole load of agendas which which, which do, doesn't seem correct uh, id digital id cbdc's and things like that which which we haven't asked for even if they were I- ideal not everybody is interested in it certainly the ules people don't want to be charged 12 pound 50 to drive their cars in in london and 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 all of these things can we not just sit down and go Do you know i don't believe any of this i don't want it and it will all magically disappear. And if that is, is the possible, then how does that work for everybody? Because they could have a completely different world. Well, the the words that um, I get given from source around this is together we are powerful. Together we are powerful. And together, you know, when you heal a negative belief, when you heal and release particularly fears around this stuff happening, you it means that you no longer engage with that information. Information, formation going in, influence. In Italian, flu is influenza. It's the influence. What have you been influenced by? Some people can have, you know, a negative influence and they'll get a cold or they'll get sick afterwards. So together we are powerful when we harness that truth that we are made of love, that we are connected to a higher source, that we are here in an amazing time in history which we refer to as the great awakening shifting into the age of aquarius where it's just becoming more mainstream to believe and understand hang on i have there's my brain is not set in stone what i believe to be true will then be what i transmit out to the world and then i create my reality and I think it'll have to be for another talk because I'm also writing a book on uh, healing from manipulation and how people can be master manipulators and will put you down and will have you believe negative stuff. So Mm. it's just, it's an amazing time of awakening and and all the clients that come to me hear about this stuff and say, "I, I want to change. I want to heal this stuff. I think I've got some trauma. I think I've got some stuff that I may have taken on from my mom or my dad or my childhood. Here we go. I'm I'm willing to to look at that and then I will scan the body and go, okay, let's start here. Do you have 
a fundamental belief that love is unconditional and not what many people would have you think that it's conditional you have to behave yourself to be loved right you have to get grade a's to be worthy at school and all those kind of things end up being deposited in in your subconscious and that's the programming that is ruling your everyday thoughts your your reactions your response so if if we now know as i said it is now more mainstream there are millions of people working and helping people clear their subconscious patterns because if you've got a belief you've probably got a whole pattern attached to it especially around unworthiness and love and trauma right trauma can literally make a person freeze in that moment so, so, so fight, you, fight or flee freeze you you don't know how to move forward so the work i do helps people move forward as well with with this um business about belief and you change things i mean there's obviously certain fundamental things that you can't i mean we, we we've all taught that gravity pulls us down and we don't fly so if we you know you couldn't just sit down one day and go i believe i can fly walk to the end of a cliff and jump off and go wow look at this i'm flying splat oh that didn't work out that i mean you're not saying that everything is changeable you could you know in your mind you just suddenly start changing the color of trees in the sky and um you know change suddenly england is now a big continent instead of just an island or mm -hmm. things like that because I get a bit confused when people say, oh, you, you can manifest things, you can change things, you change your belief system. And, and I'm thinking, but where's the line? Where is it that you say, because I can understand people can change being sad to being happy, to getting rid of um, all those things that you've just mentioned, uh, uh, being in more in love and being in tune with life, nature and stuff. But where's the line where you start saying... I live in a two up, two down house, but I now believe it's a big castle with a moat round it. That, you know, there's got to be a point where you, you, you can't go a bit too far, isn't there? Yeah, so there's fantasy and then there's belief and your own belief system. So people fantasize about living in a castle and they might live in a flat. There's no harm in doing that. What actually saves us from the ridiculous aspect of all of that is that there are universal laws so if a dog is a dog does does you know you can't start believing that it's going to be a cat just by changing your beliefs you cannot change universal laws and universal laws of gravity universal laws of truth okay so if your truth is that you are worthy because the universal truths the universe is always on our side and the universal truths about you, who you are, what you're here to do, what you're here to experience, are always loving and positive. We become unstuck because we listen to all these things and we listen and take on things from unconscious or manipulating um, sources. And then we go through a process of cleaning it all up. And that maybe is part of the human journey to come back home to who you truly are, to return to your own universal truth that love is unconditional. That true love is unconditional. And, and there might be aspects of family and romantic love and, and what is appropriate for a child and what is appropriate in public and all those social norms might influence behavior around that but the fundamental belief that you need in order to heal is i heal and i heal because i am worthy of receiving unconditional love so i channel unconditional love from source but if you don't have that program in place in a good strong and solid way where you believe it a hundred percent nothing will heal so i often get clients who come and they say well you know sherry i've been to you know lots of therapists and i've done belief work and they say well have you ever considered 
the thought that it might be serving you to have that. And I remember a book again back in the 80s, I bought in a Feltrinelli bookshop in Italy, which was wonderful to be able to get a book in English at the time. And it was called Why Me? Why This? Why Now? Brilliant book to go and read, by the way. And it was a, a, a collection of the chapters were a collection of stories of what had happened in different people, different families and different people's lives when somebody got sick, you know, and there was one where the, the mother got sick and the daughter had always been very close to the mother and, and not really spent much time with her father. And actually deep down the father was feeling rejected. So by this happening, it allowed the daughter to reconnect with her father more. And then harmony, there was all kinds of other healing that was taking place because the mother was sick. Now I'm not saying sickness brings good things, but in your brain, you do not know the difference between what is positive and what is negative. Because otherwise I could say, okay, Richard, let's release all your negative beliefs now. Here we go. Mm. Well, your brain can't filter that information out to your brain, to your body. It serves you. So how does it serve you to, to believe that you're stupid? How does it serve you to believe that um, love hurts? By the you know one common belief, love hurts. Love doesn't last. Love is only conditional. Stuff like that you're not going to actually heal and process the meaning that the sickness brought you in the first place, you know. Because when you say it, it serves, serves you, what do you, what do you, when you say it serves you, what do you mean by that? It's like it serves you, serves you right, or it serves you, it's your fault, or what do you, I mean, it's your servant, okay. how do you mean? <laughs> so nothing serves you right in terms of punishment. We don't deserve punishment. That's a belief system that has been, passed down through many generations, actually, um, through social systems of punishment. But source, that's not how source energy functions. Um, it serves you means what is it teaching you? What is it allowing you to experience that if you hadn't had that happen to you, you wouldn't have learned? So if a child gets... Um, you know, smacked repeatedly, um, they might not grow up feeling very confident. Um, but how does that serve them a lack of confidence? Well, they might have other, you know, ancestral beliefs that it's not safe to stand out, or it's not safe to receive uh, attention. Because in the past, as I said, you know, the witches and the healers, you know, when they got attention, bad things happened to them. Mm. And children feel that, right? No, 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 no. All the kind of bullying that goes on. Children, are, I mean, especially in the UK, are very kind of dulled down and, and don't want to stand out. And then they go off and have their first job interviews and continue that pattern. They don't They don't stand out. And their subconscious is saying it's not safe to stand out. So I explore with clients, well, how how is that serving you? And mm. very often the program is simply, that's what keeps me safe. So I say, well, would you like to know that it's possible to be safe in other ways? Let's show your body. Let's show your subconscious. Let's show your mind because you, when I bring in these divine this divine energy it's like a downloading to every cell of your body you then get that new frequency of those new words that new programming of course you have free will you can accept it nothing that i do or any healer can violate free will because mm. we are born with free will nobody can take away your free will so that means you can choose whether to receive that energy. And generally people, I say, would you like that downloaded to you now? Would that feel okay? And if people say, mm, no, I'm not sure, 
I might say, well, what's going to happen if you do heal this? What happens if you do get your confidence back and shine in your job? It's not like school. So maybe we need to show the inner child part that that bullying and that drama and that trauma is is over. You can I mean, it seems to me that we, we should be teaching, you know, the whole school system, if it's not giving confidence to, to children, not so much school, but parents yeah. and everything. We'd, oh. we, we have a system in which um, everything is um, on, a, on a negative. And when we saw that with the government during the, the pandemic, the government didn't do any favours by telling people to stay indoors and, and all of that. And, and, and you just eat crap food instead of saying, here's a, an amazing opportunity. We have this virus, so we're going to beat this, give people confidence, eat healthy food. We're going to promote healthy food. We're not going to promote the, uh, the quick food, the highly processed food. We're going to make sure that the water is as healthy as we can. We're going to spend all that money that we spent into providing a vaccine, which is uh, dubious at the just at the outset. Um, and instead of that, we didn't we didn't have a look at it as a, a massive health opportunity, which is what I was calling for at the time. Instead, and clearly, it became obvious that it was a psyop and it was a dangerous thing that the government were doing and consequently it's all coming out now and people have been damaged in a very terrible way um you mentioned that people don't have free will of course you, you, you prisoners people do have free will prisoners might uh, argue against that and say well i'd like to be out of here but uh, there's a big door and a lock and so their free will is obviously curtailed and and if somebody's holding a gun against you and they're about to shoot you, your free will might be somewhat curtailed. So, um, yeah, but in, that might in, be a bit compromised. <laughs> you might be compromised. And, <laughs> and of course, you, you know, the law system often goes against your free will because you think, actually, where's the victim? Where, what's going on here? No one's harmed. But you suddenly find yourself because you've driven into a bus lane and a camera has photographed you at three in the morning. Nothing has really happened and yet you you suddenly find that you're 60 pound or 120 pound whatever the fine is and so you you know your free will as i mean your free will not to pay it but then you've got to suffer all the consequences so that's a difficult thing yeah so of course there're going to be situations where people are put in compromised situations and prisons i mean god forbid anybody ever winds up in that kind of situation but you know um but, the, but they well, do that's the thing isn't it they do well, they do they do yeah but that's you know life throws up all kinds of good and bad the point that i'm making here from like from a sort of universal perspective you are still given free will of your mind your perception okay so if those awful things are happening and awful things do happen unfortunately in life your perception is what gives back your control to move forward from it so a bad thing happen i work with a lot of people who had trauma and awful things and trafficking and you know really bad things have happened but the free will is to say okay that happened now I take on board the healing. Now I take on board the, the, the life lessons from that. Now, if that were to happen again, I wouldn't allow myself to end up in that situation. That's what I've learned. I've learned if I meet somebody like that, run. <laughs> mm, good <laughs> idea. I've learned if I hear somebody telling me, you can't do this, you have to do this, that violates, you know, general um you know rights of people general sovereignty then i'm i'm not going to listen and i will say here's something everybody could do you could just say i unplug from that reality i cancel delete that thought because a thought that comes in as somebody's saying and repeating you can choose to take it on and let it in your brain or if you're more conscious and aware of what's really going on, how maybe our minds are being played with, 
you won't take it on. You'll stay in your power. You'll stay in your sovereignty. You'll stay in your strength. You'll go, you'll activate your choices and go, um, I think I need to do a little bit more research of my own about that. I think I can decide for myself what is going to be good for me. If you like natural or if you like, you know, anything, you know, sometimes people are in so much pain, they say, give me a pill, right? Mm. And yes. it works. And it works. We, you know, we need everything. Everything that exists gives you the power to choose the yin and the yang, the dark and the light. How so, do you um, learn? You learn from the dark to be in the light. You learn from the bad to be good. You learn from the opposites to discern. Yeah, we, um, we're we running out of time now. Um, we started off with who's making up your mind. Presumably from what you've said, it's it's we're making up our minds and it's whether we choose to accept. It's a bit like the Mission Impossible, your mission, Jim, if you choose to accept it. <laughs> and so thoughts are coming in. Um, there's a lot of mind control. The nudge unit of the government has nudged us. We've potentially got more lockdowns and viruses and pandemics you know floating about we we have um organizations like the who who are sort of proposing and keeping us in fear um what do you say to those people who are anxious about the state of the world um and you know may have followed it did the right thing you know did followed the yeah. advice stuck in with the guidance and maybe they're now questioning whether they did the right thing because it's very difficult to sort of think that a government that you voted in are going to be doing bad things to you deliberately. Surely in a democratic society that we have in the West that would not happen. But it does seem on the face of it that a lot of the people in authority don't seem to have our best interests at heart or the world in this country anyway uh, would not be the way it is because they continually term after term governments tell us they're going to fix the NHS they're going to fix the school system they're going to get rid of crime we're going to sort out migrants and it never happens I mean I'm no, 60, it never really happens does it I'm 60 and I remember them saying all this when I was in my 20s when I was sort of paying attention to it 40 years later so these guys clearly either are completely incompetent or they don't have our best interests at heart I can't believe that there are not people who could just immediately say the migrant crisis is over we're turning the boats back the NHS we're going to actually do stuff that's good for you and when a pandemic comes, we're not going to mandate people that they have to have something that's still an experimental stage. If these people are making up our minds, how do we, This I have to end on this, how do we push back against these nudge units, these authorities, the mainstream media, making us feel that we have to obey because they have our best interests at heart? Well, again, I would say always return to your heart, always come back to maybe some self-help methods. You know, you can email, have a look at my website, sherryjemmett.com. I explain about beliefs. I explain about how, you know, we can download lovely, positive information because that, you know, nothing can violate your free will. In truth, nothing can violate your free will. And the way out of this is by coming home to your own truth, your own sovereignty, um, cultivate self-care ways of, of, you know, making sure your mind goes quiet a little bit every day, you know, not too much TV, not too much internet, not too much phone time, not too much listening to negative people or hanging around negative people, not too much listening to other people's fears, because you've got to remember that your thoughts are not always your own. So tune in with yourself and go, is this my thought or have I picked that up from somewhere else? Maybe I'm thinking about it because it's been presented into my energy field and I've hooked into it. So just say things like, that thought is not coming into my energy field. 
cancel, delete, right? I return that back to source or I return that thought or that negative energy back to the sender with love and cultivate thoughts that are actually empowering to you, empowering to your own inner child, releasing trauma. You know, there's lots of therapies out there. There's lots of self-help books. There's lots of YouTube videos on this. And then you can actually go to a therapist and do the work yourself in depth specifically designed, tailored to your specific issues in life and get the stuff cleared so that you can really sparkle and be joyful. Life is supposed to be great. Well, and that we stuff is, is stuff that's been put in the matrix and, you know, what pill? <laughs> it's like, you there you go. That story you mentioned the matrix word. Creating. Yeah. Uh, I create my own story. I create my own reality. I create my own experience. Yes, you can't change somebody who's got a gun to your head, but it's like David Icke says, you are in charge of your perception. How do you perceive? Is that this bottle, is it? Is it good? Is it good or is it bad? It's lovely for me. I love it. Is this crystal helpful or not? It does happy. depend what's in the bottle. If that was a bottle of bleach, you probably would be best advised not to drink it. Yeah, and you No matter how much hear. you believe that it's going to do you good, yeah. you probably better not yeah. drink it. Yeah, I mean, placebo. People were given placebo pills in hospitals and they healed. And the doctors yes. went, well, that's interesting because we gave them a sugar pill. Yes. That proves, again, that your thoughts can heal your body. So yeah, well, stay with that image in your daily life. Your thoughts, your perceptions are going to give you hope, are going to give you positive images moving forward through all this kind of swampy energy that's around us in the moment. And I do believe we come out beautifully happy the other side of this. Well, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Positive thoughts from Sherry. I will put your um, web page on the description so people can check that out. Thank you. Um, at your Theta Healing. Thank you so much for telling me all about um, who's controlling your mind, how we control it ourselves, and how the subconscious mind works for us. It's been absolutely fascinating. Really appreciate it. Thank um, you so much. My, my pleasure. Um, I will be back with more interviews and uh, monologues, of course, on the channel. So do keep tuning in. Thank you very much for subscribing. But for the moment, Sherry from Sherry and I, take care. Look after yourselves. Bye bye. <laughs>